Jeff Huang is a Pot Limit Omaha expert with an insightful column in Card Player and a number of definitive books on the subject. Card Player TV caught up with him recently to learn about big pot and small pot hands in PLO. All right, so the first thing you need to learn about Pot Limit Omaha is hand valuations um, and how not to or get killed in big pot situations. The biggest mistake that new players come in and make from coming from Hold'em is they put all their money in with small pot hands. So you have to learn the difference between what a big pot hand is and a small pot hand is. Uh, a big pot hand would be the nut flush. You put your whole stack in there with a the nut flush. Um, a small pot hand would be the king high flush or less because you never put more than, than two bets in on a flop uh, with, you know, with a king high flush. If you're putting a, you know, a bet in a raise and re-raise, you're doing something wrong. Um, the overfull, like like a nine eight on a nine nine eight flop, or if you have pocket nines on a nine eight eight flop, is a big pot hand. Uh, if you have the underfull, which is like you know pocket eights on a nine nine eight flop, uh, that's a small pot hand because if you play a big pot, you're going to be up against either trip nines or a nine eight. So either you're going to be smoked by the nine eight, or you're going to be a small favorite against against the the trip nines at best. Another big pot hand is the the nut the nut straight with a with a redraw like a flush draw or a set. Um, you don't want to put three bets in with the bare nut straight because the only hand that's going to put three bets in with you is the is the nut straight with, with the redraw. Um, and if you ha all you have is the straight, then you're going to you're going to be free rolled. So in addition to, to made hands, there are also you know big big draw hands and in big or small pot hands that are draws. Um, like you want to be drawing at the nuts. The smallest big pot draw or big draw is is a 13 card nut wrap. Uh, so basically, when the flop is like 10 9 x. Um, you, and you have king, queen, jack. You have a, you have a thirteen card wrap, which means you have thirteen cards to make that make a straight. But on this board, you get with that hand, it, all thirteen outs are to the nuts. Because any king, queen, jack, nine um, will, will give you the nuts straight. Uh, but if instead on that ten nine x flop you have eight seven six, that you have a thirteen card wrap, but all, your outs are not to the nuts. Um, the only nut outs you have are, to, are the six, because. Uh, because a seven will make will make jack eight a bigger straight, um, and eight will make you know queen jack bigger straight, and pretty much any straight you make is a, is is good for anybody somebody else, um, and so you can get dominated by somebody else who just has a bigger draw than you or or none of your draw. Like, so if you have like you know jack eight, somebody holding king queen jack will will have yeah, any straight you make will will make them the nuts, basically. Once you figure out you know what, how strong your hand is, whether you have a big pot hand or a small pot hand, which like a small pot hand would be a hand that's strong enough to beat anything else uh, other than the bigger hand. Um, basically, you have to decide whether to play pot control or whether you want to play big pot or small pot. Um, you have a small pot hand like like a king high flush. You might call one bet on the flop, but if there's a bet and raise in front of you. You're probably going to probably going to pitch the the king high flush. Um, if you have you know the under full, and you're facing a bet and raise. You're probably going to fold that. Um, and you know, coming from Hold'em, it, so it sounds like a weak fold, but that's just the way the game is played. Um, if you want to keep your money, um, uh, weak draws. Uh, if you have anything less than a 13 card note wrap, and, and you're facing a bet and a raise, you're probably going to fold that too. You want to have a hand that's strong enough to make it through the river. Um, for example, you, you know, top, you know, or even just bare two pair is not not very strong in Omaha. Um, like for example, you have two pair on the board of Jack 10 Deuce uh, with two clubs, and you have Jack 10, you know, like seven six. Uh, you're not really, you just have basically top two pair in a, in a weak gut shot. You don't have a flush draw. Um, your hand's not going to be very good, not, not be good by the river very often because you know pretty much any card that makes a straight is going to beat you. Any card that makes a flush is going to beat you. If you bet out and get raised, a lot of times you have to fold the top two pair um, on that flop um, because your hands will a, usually be. Smashed by like a set, or you're not you're not gonna be in good shape even against a big draw, because um, the hand you know the draws run very big in Omaha. Um, like on Jack Ten flop, somebody with Ace King Queen with clubs uh, is gonna be a huge favorite against your top two pair. You know, the key in the Omaha is just thinking about the big big picture. Uh, you know, I mean, in Hold'em you, you kind of focus on the two card hand that you have, like the one pair or the set or the two pair. So you had to think about the the totality of the hand. Like the, the pair plus the draw plus the wrap, um, the set with the redraws, the, the, the straight with the redraws. Um, you just kind of have to think about the, the whole picture. So you know, Omaha, sometimes you have to fold hands that you would never fold and hold them. Um, but the hands run, just run so much bigger in, in Omaha. Right, you just got to know when to play a small pot and you got to know when to play a big pot.